um, the session has been done by a combination of myself and my colleagues Elise and Isaac um, and Elise will also be co-presenting so I'll just, um, Elise if you can just quickly introduce yourself. Hi, thanks. Uh, my name is Elise Boileau and I'm researcher at the audience agency in the evidence and insights team and for the audio description I am a white female with short black curly hair and I have a lovely monstera behind me and um, <laughs> <laughs> we just went into uh, describing surroundings so um, uh, yeah back to you Ali. Look, um, yes so it'll mainly be me doing me doing lots of talking um, but Elise um, will be joining us for a bit of it later on um, if you've got any questions yourself on the way through, please do uh, post questions in the chat or indeed if you want to interject, um, then un unmute and, and say hello. Um, we'll try and pick up questions as we go. There'll be a chance for a, a bit of a Q&A session later on. Um, I have to say from a personal point of view, it's very exciting seeing some of the people who are at this session, um, particularly um, some of the organisations that at various points in, in my previous life I've worked with over the years. Uh, whether it's you know, in Scarborough Rural Arts or, or York or wherever else. Um, so um, it's, this one's a bit of a treat. I mean, it's um, this was one of these ses sessions we've done sort of by request, um, um, but I was really pleased the request came in because I've been, you know, I, I like talking about North Yorkshire, I'll be honest. Right. <laughs> so um, I'm just going to move us on to uh, just a brief outline of what we're going to be talking about today and um, so what we're looking to do with these sessions really is to summarize uh, a bit of background information that we've got about audiences um, give you a chance to have a bit of a conversation in relation to that um, and for us to use that to then sort of you know um, draw together some some thoughts about the implications of what that might all mean um, we're not despite the rather beautiful geological map um, uh, on the side there i'm going to be using geological maps um, although i it's kind of interesting. Um, we're going to be talking a lot about sort of mapping of audience data, of background population, um, some things we know from Audience Finder, our audience data collection service that many of you will know, um, as well as things about the background population um, in terms of audience spectrum, which is our segmentation model. More about um, those in a sec. Um, so that's broadly speaking what we're going to cover. Uh, we'll also look at what we found out from the cultural participation monitor, which is our kind of um, nationally representative survey of um, the public's attitudes and responses around engagement at the moment. Um, and we'll feed that into the picture um, and see and see what it shows. Um, I'm always conscious um, that when we're doing these sessions, we're, we're talking to people who are often you know, based in and have worked for a long time in particular areas. Um, and although having previously worked at Audience Yorkshire and Anco and so forth, I've done work with um, North Yorkshire for getting on for 20 years. I'm sure there'll be loads of things that we say that might be obvious to you if you live more locally, um, but it's all just about us sharing the information we have and working from there. Um, so without any more ado, um, let's start to have a look at the information we've got here. Um, so. The first thing to say is that the actual area we're looking at, which hopefully won't be a surprise to anyone here, um, is York and North Yorkshire, um, partly sort of joining up that sort of Selby to the rest of North Yorkshire. Um, but obviously the, the, the York and North Yorkshire do to some extent act as a sort of single uh, sort of spatial entity, um, although we will sort of tease that idea apart a bit a uh, little bit later on. Um, but in terms of information sources, um, so if this is our kind of if you like this is our pitch, um, then what we'll be uh, looking at is that national population data um, from the participation monitor, so what people are thinking and what types of groups are, are doing what. Um, more local information, we can get into sort of more specifics of the audience finder, audience spectrum. Um, we get sort of increasingly granular with some of those sources which allow us to kind of track things that are very kind of um, even local authority or even you know getting down to, to ward levels um, and often we'll be using ward as a quite useful just small local geography to sort of tease apart what's going on in particular places um, we will be sharing the slides afterwards um, slides also contain kind of um, 
what you might call Easter eggs, um, sort, of, sort of extra hidden slides that contain some of the data that's behind some of the charts. So if you want to know the data more specific to your local area, the data will probably be there um, in those in those other charts at various points. Okay, is everyone 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 with me? It's all all making sense. Okay, so I should say a couple of things by way of introduction, just about the data sources we're using. Um, because whilst I'm conscious that some of you will be really familiar uh, with some of these things, others of you it will be completely new to you. So, for those who are really familiar with the things like audience spectrum, apologies. This bit will only take a couple of minutes, but we sort of need to get everyone up to speed. Otherwise, um, this won't make a lot of sense um, to those other people. So, um, lying behind lots of the data analysis we, we're using here is this way of thinking about the population of the UK. Uh, and what we at the audience agency have done um, in partnership with Experian, the people behind Zay and various other data analysis things, um, is to split the whole population into 10 groups. And those groups were divided based on the combinations of arts and cultural things they typically do. So we took taking part survey data, which sort of summarizes what people do, um, with a nice sort of big sample of, um, sort of many thousands of respondents. And we looked within that and said, are there typical groupings of people who are doing similar types of things and that have certain things in common. And from that, we could divide the population, broadly speaking, into high, medium, and low engaged types. And each of those types have different attributes. So, so they may live in different places, they may tend to do different things and so forth. So here, to start with, we've got our three high engaged groups. So we've got uh, metroculturals, who are, generally speaking, very highly concentrated in London. Um, there are some exceptions, and there are some exceptions in this region, which is quite interesting. Um, but in some, and normally I'd say, um, you know, places like York, but actually there's, there's a good little pocket in Harrogate as well, which will come across. Um, so they tend to be um, sort of affluent professionals um, with um, you know, higher education background, um, the tendency to be very highly engaged in arts and culture across quite a range of different things, but it's sort of skewed towards if you like the best of whatever's available. Commuter land culture buffs, um, who as the name implies, um, tend to live in commuter areas, um, tend to be highly culturally engaged, the slight skew towards more traditional things. Um, and then younger, um, younger typically graduates, um, experience seekers who tend to be more varied and more contemporary in their tastes. Um, but again, another, another sort of highly engaged group. We then got three middle engaged groups. Um, I should say there's more information about all of these on our website um, if you want to delve into more detail. Um, but broadly speaking, we've got dormitory dependables. So dormitory town tendency to go to a reasonable amount of things, have a bit of money in their pocket, um, but aren't defined or they don't define themselves in terms of being sort of super arty or, or culturally engaged, but they still do a bunch of things. Chips and treats, who tend to be kind of younger families, um, are similarly kind of mid-engaged, but family is a real key, key driver for them. Um, and home and heritage, so typically um, what you might describe as your classic National Trust member, uh, a little bit older, more of a heritage interest, um, tend to be more rural, and we'll see that here again in the, in the map. Uh, and then finally, we have these four groups um, who are less engaged groups typically, although individuals within them might be very engaged. Um, so we have up our street, um, who tends to be, um, well, there's really high concentrations in like Northern terraces, for example. So there are loads of places like Bradford and you know, Pockets and um, various other Northern cities. Um, and interestingly, quite a few in Scarborough, we'll, we'll come across in a sec. Um, there is kaleidoscope creativity, which is less present in this region particularly, but tends to be kind of, um, in big cities, often sort of flat dwellers, um, maybe a sort of bit younger, tends to be more, more diverse. Um, frontline families, so sort of often lower income families, um, various sorts. Uh, that group used to be called Facebook families for those who have um, used Audience Spectrum in the past. We just recently renamed it just to make it a bit more useful. Um, and then the final group, supported communities um, with a you know, a preponderance of uh, council and social housing, um, supported or sheltered housing, um, 
but also you know a tendency to be um, particularly in coastal um, and often northern um, locations. Um, and again, we'll see pockets of those um, pop up in a few particular places, um, including one which might surprise you, which I'll, I'll leave as a little teaser. Um, so those are the groups overall. Uh, we have um, for each of these, as I say, um, related all sorts of different um, data to, to create these groups and also to describe them in more detail. So they were built using the taking part survey. Um, we also used various other things around where cultural infrastructure was and things. Um, there's lots of other data from Experian who have their own massive data sets on every household. Uh, we've brought in population data, census data. We've used that to kind of map it and locate it in particular places. Um, and of course, through things like Audience Finder, uh, we've got survey data, ticketing data, um, and we can look at those and see how different segments behave. Um, so that's all kind of feeding into, into this process. We're nearly there for those that are thinking, I know all this already. Um, each of these have profiles on our website, uh, which sort of summarise the overall picture, all descriptions, much more detail for each of these different areas. Um, so really quite a lot going on um, if you want to find out about more about individual segments. Um, we also recently then split each of these segments into smaller groups. Um, and that's important, particularly where you've got lots of a few groups, as in fact is the case in North Yorkshire. So about 70% of the population um, in North Yorkshire comes from four top level audience spectrum groups. So clearly it's useful to be able to differentiate those. So we're not just talking about these really big groups of people. Um, and we've done that. So each of these are split into two. The net result of which is you've got these um, 20 different subsegments. Um, and each of them has the slightly different characteristics. We'll talk about a couple of those um, in relation to this. Um, again, there's more information about all of them if you're interested on our website. So, just a quick check. Does anyone have any questions at this stage? Is this all making sense as a kind of background intro? And should we dive into the real details? So there's a nice link from Elise there in the chat. Um, do feel free to give us a shout if you have anything that you want to ask on the way through. But for now, I will take that to, to suggest that this is making sense and I will keep going. So to start with, let's look at um, who it is that's living in this local area. Um, bits of this will be some of the least surprising things you'll ever hear, but we'll hopefully get to more, more interesting bits in a sec. So looking at overall demographics, and then we'll look at some of the audience spectrum picture. Um, overall demographics, um, I mean, first really simple thing is in terms of population, um, York is of course the single largest um, local authority in the mix here, um, but actually Harrogate, certainly to my mind, um, is not as far behind as I maybe would have assumed. Um, and indeed, um, you know, the gap from Harrogate to York is about the same as the gap from um, Harrogate to Scarborough is our third, third, third place. Um, so that might be worth um, sort of observing. Um, and I've got a little pie chart here just to give you a, a broad sense of you know, how spread it is. It gets pretty even um, but below that. Um, so that's the overall distribution of the population. Um, and worth keeping this in mind when we look at the maps, because of course maps show areas rather than people. So there's a tendency for rural areas to kind of really rear up. Um, in mapping because um, they're, they're very large areas but um, here is the least surprising stat you'll you'll see which is that very large proportions of this area um, have a majority white population a very heavily majority white population so that those figures will be updated once the new census comes out we're not expecting those to shift hugely obviously um, there's a little bit more diversity in York but not to a huge extent um, where I think it potentially gets um, more interesting is when we start looking at the um, age mix, um, which again, I mean, it's, it's not super surprising, but you know, York does tend to be, well, all of the areas have a reasonable population of a very young population, as in you know, children's population. Um, but once you start to get into the twenties and thirties, York really sticks out as being different um, within, that, within that mix. Um, Richmondshire, interestingly, 
isn't that far behind from the SDLs. Um, again, we'll come back to why, why that is for those that haven't tested it already. So, um, one thing we found looking at the population data across York and North Yorkshire is that two particular groups stuck out. And we think that these are particularly important groups to talk about and think about, um, partly because we know what we know about the way that engagement has been changing over the last um, two, three years um, because of COVID and, and other things. Um, and that's families and retirees. So first thing to look is just where are the families, um, broadly speaking, um, and we'll see that there's relatively higher proportions in some of the sort of further, sort of further south areas, um, up the um, A1 or M1 and A1, um, and little pockets near Scarborough. Um, this mapping makes it look like there are absolutely loads of families in Selby. I think that's just a little bit about how the particular splits in our data have worked out. There are actually concentrations elsewhere that kind of bring up um, places like Richmondshire to a sort of similar or indeed higher level. Um, but we can see that that's broadly speaking where the skew of the family concentration is. If we start to look at where the retirees live, unsurprisingly, um, there are loads more um, in the more rural um, rural areas. So you can see, you know, big chunks in Craven, um, up in sort of Ham um, Hamilton, over, over in sort of North Ridale, etc. Um, lower concentrations elsewhere, but there are concentrated pockets in the area around, around York. Um, so we looked at this and thought it seems to be roughly speaking, and sort of an alternating picture, you know, it seems to be the case that places with more retirees have fewer families and vice versa. Um, so we thought we'd test that as a theory. Um, and so this next slide, which is, runs the risk of looking a little bit weird and scary, but I will explain, um, is looking at different wards and the proportion of families they have, left to right, um, compared to the proportion of retirees they have, bottom to top. And our, our, our starting theory was that, broadly speaking, the line would go from top left to bottom right. So they would kind of tend to see, if you've got more retirees, you've got fewer families, um, which intuitively makes a certain amount of sense. Um, and what we saw was, as you can see here, there's actually a fair amount of variety and there isn't particularly intense clustering of one local authority over another. So we're talking about an area that does have a fair amount of commonality. Um, however, we could pull out a couple of particular distinct differences. So first one was this, which is, yes, it's true that for most of the local authorities, there was a tendency to go from top left to bottom right. You, know, you either have lots of retirees or you have lots of families or you have a trade-off between the two. Um, however, in York and Harrogate, you had quite a number of areas where there were just low proportions of both. Um, and that was relatively distinctive compared to the rest of the region. Um, and indeed, the correlation in, those, in York and Harrogate tends to run the opposite direction. You either live in an area with both high numbers of retirees and high numbers of families or neither. There's a sort of tendency to go that way rather than the other. Um, which is kind of a like curiosity. It doesn't apply to Scarborough, uh, which is the other place you might have thought would behave like that. Um, what we also saw is that there are some places with um, distinctively um, very high proportion of uh, retirees compared to other things, uh, other places. Um, and generally speaking, um, this is actually Scarborough um, and bits of Hamilton, but the Scarborough's sort of standing out there. Um, despite the fact that there's a more built-up area you'd normally expect to be more even mix. Um, and Scarborough does have a really quite interesting and distinctive um, audience profile um, in a couple of ways that we'll come across um, as time goes on. Um, and then finally, um, there are some places which have loads of families, but really very few retirees. Um, and here, in the same way that we're, uh, maybe, they were slightly surprised that it wasn't the most rural areas that jumped out as having most retirees uh, without families, such as Scarborough. Here, Richmondshire is sticking out particularly, and bits of Harrogate as having lots of families and not very many retirees, which again isn't necessarily what one might have assumed, I think, um, particularly if a couple of these are so different. Um, but as my colleagues will, will recall, I was uh, amused and delighted to actually spot this little pattern in the data. Um, because there's a 
um, strategic marketing course that the Arts Marketing Association have run for years that uses some kind of faked data, uh, some dummy data, and they, all, all the exercises they've run, and this is literally going back decades, I was asking people, can you work out what's different about this place just based on, the, on this um, profiling data? Um, and it was always a place that had lots of families, lots of younger people in technical occupations, um, not particularly um, affluent, but relatively high skilled, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, low levels of unemployment. And the data was based on Catterick Garrison in Richmondshire. Uh, and sure enough, if you zoom in on the areas that behave really atypically, um, in several times in this analysis, um, Catterick jumps out. Um, so Hipswell, um, and Scotland, et cetera, are, are near, near Catterick. Um, or in Catterick. Um, so that's what we're seeing here, is that we have these sort of essentially um, sort of, uh, barrack areas or sort of army, army family um, areas. Um, that's why those populations are so different. Um, okay, so um, here we get, a, if you like, a, a, the clue about why we think these two groups are so particularly worth focusing on, you know, retirees and families. Um, and this is based on, as I said, the Ultra Participation Monitor. So this is our nationally representative survey of what the whole population across the country, um, how they're feeling, what they're doing in terms of um, cultural engagement. And a question that we've been asking right the way through is if there was something you want to you know, something you're interested in seeing, um, would you be happy to attend? Would you consider attending with reservations, et cetera, as we go down this list. Um, and we've consistently seen a difference between the behaviours of certain different types of people, particularly um, age being a really big difference. So the older you are, the less likely you are, so you're happy to attend. Um, but also um, families. So you know, people of middle-aged people who either have families or don't have families, there's, a, there's even there, there's a clearly marked difference. So this is looking at the national picture, not just specific to York and North Yorkshire, but of course, we know there's high concentrations of these groups in particular parts of this region. Um, and we can see there's a really quite stark difference in terms of the proportion of families who are happy to attend relative to the proportion of people who are retirees who are happy to attend. Um, and indeed, you know, a really large group of retirees who are saying that they're just not attend interested in attending at the moment. Um, so what we have seen through this, through this most recent period is a bit of a shift in terms of who is most likely to be interested in cultural engagement. Um, and I mean, families we know have always been a, kind of a, a good, a good um, driver for engagement, but often relatively highly engaged people who are older are looking more reluctant to attend relative to maybe more moderately engaged people um, who are families or are a bit younger. So we're seeing a bit of a shift there. Um, and that's something which we think could have quite a big impact in terms of audience behaviour um, looking forward. Um, and it's probably something that's particularly notable um, in relation to um, certainly sections of uh, North Yorkshire, um, given the mixture of people that are living in these different areas. So you remember that mapping we saw earlier on when there's sort of like you know, more uh, retirees up in the rural areas, um, more of the families in slightly um, further south you'd expect a bit of a tilt in terms of the balance of audiences in that direction as well. Um, and indeed, going along with that, the kind of things that people are interested in going to. So again, that might have an impact in terms of programming, in terms of messaging, in terms of language and all sorts of other things. Um, so yeah, so this is the picture we're starting to see and we'll maybe unpick that a little bit more as we go along. Okay. So coupled with, you know, people saying, would you be willing to go to things? We said, well, actually, have you been to things you know, in, the last, in the last 12 months? Or whether that's online, whether it's in person, whether it's doing creative activities in general. Um, and we can see that, again, there's, there's a marked difference um, between these groups. Um, most pronounced, unsurprisingly, in terms of online engagement, you know, practically double the proportion um, of families relative to retirees having done online things. Um, it is worth noting though, that where we've looked at um, online engagement and we looked at the barriers to online engagement, for lots of retirees, it's not necessarily about not having the skills, not having access to technology. That, that kind of notion of a kind of digital divide by age 
is something which is slightly sort of like from a few years ago. Now, actually, lots of retirees are very on, you know, very online and very, very capable of doing things online. Um, it's just maybe they're less motivated. There's less where they you know, live culturally, etc. Um, but it's not that they can't, um, with exceptions, of course. But those exceptions often apply right across the age profile. Um, and, and it's more linked to kind of income um, and, and sort of social circumstances and that it is just about age until you get um, substantially older. You know, when you get to the much, much older age categories, and if that is still the case, but um, not so much in general. So um, we're seeing this quite big difference in actual behavior, in projected behavior. Um, and indeed, when we've looked um, doing other bits of analysis um, of, of various sorts, we, we're seeing a similar pattern coming out. Um, and we think that's that, that there's a bit of a kind of tilt going on in audiences. Um, so some of that tilt can be, can be seen in terms of particular audience groups. So we'll look at who's, who's, who's there in the local area, um, and then we'll talk a bit about the implications of that later. Um, so the key thing to note, as I mentioned before, that if these are the audience spectrum groups, um, names abbreviated along the bottom, but um, essentially 70% of the population of North Yorkshire is within these four groups that are highlight, highlighted. Um, so, in fact, they're not that well highlighted, sorry. Um, Daunch and Dependables, Trips and Treats, Home and Heritage. So there's three middle engaged groups and then Community Land Culture Bus. So, a high concentration of relatively mid engaged groups, relatively lower concentrations of the lower engaged groups. Um, so, in some ways, that's potentially good news um, in terms of um, potential engagement um, or opportunities. Um, however, if we look at those four groups that make up such a big chunk of the um, population, the outer two, community land culture buff and home and heritage, um, are relatively, um, their engagement is sort of softening compared to what it was, um, partly because they tend to be older on average, um, and therefore they tend to be a bit more reluctant to attend at the moment, um, compared to dormitory pendables and trips and treats, who, with a higher proportion of families in them, um, have a tendency to be a little bit more, more engaged now. So those are really big groups. You've got lots of the sort of groups you might expect to attend, but there's a bit of difference um, in terms of implications. However, we do have some of the other groups, um, but they tend in practice to be quite localised. So 9% experience seekers looks like quite a lot of potential engagers. Um, but really, if we start, oh, I'll come to that later. If we start looking at that, our very concentration in York. Um, so here, because we have these four groups that's so dominant, um, we thought it was useful to show the next tier of detail down in terms of audience spectrum um, to look at sort of those subgroups. Um, and here we can see that the community land culture bus, for example, although it's like 15% of the population overall, actually most of that is made up of a particular um, group, which is the wealthy empty nesters, wealthy empty nesters, um, the C2 group. Um, and where that's key is because what that's showing us is that although there are lots of community land culture bus, they tend to be the sort who are most likely to be more reluctant to engage now because they tend not to be families. Um, so there's, you know, it's, that group is tilted that way, if you like. Um, with the other groups, it's a bit more of an even picture, um, but um, you can still see there's quite high proportions of these subgroups, 14% you know, of the whole population. Um, sat within this um, D2 community town family group, for example. So again, there's um, more detail of that on the hidden slides. Um, this is the overall, um, just looking across all of the subsegments um, of the picture. Um, and you can see that, yeah, for some of them, it's very particular um, one subsegment, like supported communities, pretty much all one subtype. Um, but um, again, those four key groups really sticking out um, as being sort of key, key part of the local population. But as I said, it very much varies by locality. So experience seekers, we've got absolutely loads in York and really very few anywhere else. Um, so there's, you know, there's pockets up in the Harrogate, but really uh, looking at all York. Um, community land culture bus, on the other hand, um, really prominent in Harrogate, um, so up to almost a third of the population, um, but next to none of those in Scarborough. Um, 
And again, it's been picture elsewhere. Scarborough really high for our street. Um, and indeed, I think relatively higher than other areas for all the lower engaged segments. Um, but also lots of the Home and Heritage Group, um, who are um, the group who are maybe most likely to be cutting back their engagement at the moment. Um, so that's the kind of overall picture. And depending where you are, there's again, there's a data table which gives you the, the precise figures on these. Um, it will give you a bit of a sense of which types of people are more or less concentrated in your area. Um, just by way of illustration, this is showing the wards with the highest, second and third highest um, proportions in the whole of North Yorkshire for each of the groups, just to give you a bit of a flavour of where there are. Um, and this is where something I think quite interesting jumps out. So yes, for the two highest engaged groups, we've got loads in Harrogate, um, different bits of Harrogate. Um, but equally, if we look at the two least engaged groups down there at the bottom, um, there are also substantial pockets in Harrogate. So, you know, I've often had conversations with people um, working in, in around Harrogate saying, oh, you know, the cliches aren't quite the whole picture because there are pockets um, of, you know, lower incomes or lower levels of engagement, et cetera. Um, that's very much true. Um, you know, um, so I think it's just north, northeast of the centre, um, sort of pockets, um, different population there. So um, that's maybe worth noting. Um, but also you can see, you know, the, the prominence of York within the experience cities, for example. Um, and then maybe some of those more rural areas um, in home and heritage. So, um, if you want the full detail on this, we do have the enhanced area profile report, which gives the kind of breakdown for every either ward or postcode sector, um, which is something which is, is available as a paid service if you're if you're interested in getting that sort of super zoomed in detail for your local area for this and indeed loads of other demographic information. Um, if we look at the split of these subsegments in a bit more detail, they're looking at how it varies by a particular uh, local authority. Um, you can see sort of like really big concentrations of, let's say, dormitory dependables in Richmondshire and Rydale. Um, but again, it's the prominence of that D2 group rather than necessarily so much the D D1 group. Um, but you can see there's again, there's also a bit of a, a bit of a variety in different places about which is which is predominant, um, um, or at least you know in some places it's much more even than others. To be a fair description. Um, we have something similar going on if we start to look at those other um, middle engaged groups, trips and treats and home heritage, um, that there are you know, particularly many um, of the um, T2 group um, in some areas rather than others, for example. Um, and again, this, this hopefully will allow you, if you're looking at particularly local audiences, um, to really zoom in on the subtype and descriptions as opposed to the more, more general kind of overall, overall picture. Okay. So, um, does anyone have any questions at this point? Um, or shall I go on to explain what this, what this is showing us in terms of who's, who's, who's engaging? So, so this is a map which shows each ward which of these audience spectrum types is the largest within that, within that particular ward. Um, so it gives you what we, you know, what we refer to as the dominant um, segment. So it's not necessarily the majority of everybody, um, but it's bigger than any other segment. Um, and the broad brush picture with this is um, that there are large swathes of community land culture buffs across the kind of southern edge of North Yorkshire, big pockets of home and heritage up towards Scarborough, um, large areas of dormitory dependables elsewhere, but interspersed particularly around some of the kind of slightly more um, slightly more built-up areas, maybe uh, with bits and trips and treats. So that's the kind of the overall picture in terms of background. Um, then we see dotted in and around that in very specific places, um, different concentrations of other groups. So for example, York, we see this little blue patch. So that's our experience seekers who are really concentrated in York and particularly around the university. Um, we see a little sort of pocket, um, pocket of frontline families surrounded Selby. 
um, and I did a few up in Scarborough, linked with some other experience seekers there, but also lots of up our street in little concentrated patches um, across these different areas um, as well. We have a few in Skip. Um, too. Okay, so if that's what the ground population is looking like, let's look at what happens if we look at just the the largest segment of those who we see in the audience find a booking date. Um, so here we see that the Greek and Cultural area has got bigger. You know, they're, they're the predominant group across large swathes. Um, the uh, frontline families areas have largely, in most cases, disappeared and swallowed up by these other ones. Um, Dormitory dependables still very prominent. Home and heritage a bit less so. Um, um, so when you're looking at your own audience data, it might start to look a bit more like this than the actual background population. And, and that's, yeah, that's why. Um, we can also look at that then by, you know, zoomed in to these particular areas. So Scarborough, York and Harrogate. So we can see the pockets we've already talked about. So York's got the experience seekers, this big blue bit, um, with a couple of little pockets um, of other groups around the edge. Um, Harrogate, similar thing with the, the, um, the experience seekers in blue. But more trips and treats, and that's that little pocket up there. Um, um, it's the north and east, which has lots of trips and treats in it, as well as the other groups. Um, and again, Scarborough. Um, again, we see kind of like you know, once you get right into the built up areas, the population profile switches a bit. Um, if we then compare that to Booker's, again, the picture changes, and we get a much higher concentration of British land culture, after storm and pendables, kind of filling in some of those other areas. Um, and the D-trips and treats in Scarborough become much more of a um, prominent feature. Um, so again, it's just worth worth noting that what the place looks like if you like if you're looking through the population lens or through the, the booking data lens. Um, to make this easier to, to see, this is highlighting only those areas that have changed um, between the two between the two views. So this is we can see. It's largely home and heritage up um, towards Rye down to Scarborough, um, chips and treats um, round down to Selby and up to uh, Hamilton, um, where we could have seen those switching um, and largely switching in those in those two cases to um, dormitory dependables, and indeed a whole load of dormitory dependables switching to um, uh, commuter land golf course. So this is just showing us then for those four groups that are such a key part of, of, of um, the population, where they tend to be concentrated. So you can see the dormitory dependables, um, quite broadly spread across the particularly Rydale, right Richmond. Um, we see a slightly more compact but intense um, concentration of trips and treats in particular pockets. Um, again, we see the, the, the Vale of York. Um, Sort of the motorway corridors um, sticking out a bit. Commuter land culture buffs kind of avoiding those areas, but there are big concentrations elsewhere, lots down between the sort of Harwood or Harewood, whichever it's pronounced, um, between Harriet and Leeds. Um, and then home and heritage, really big concentrations up again, sort of north, north, north northeast Yorkshire coast, um, up into Richmondshire as well. Okay, so when you're thinking about um, audiences either for particular places you're based or indeed that you might be going to for those who've got some touring um, organizations. Um, again, it's just worth thinking about which of these groups is most concentrated in those particular patches you're going to. What are the kind of things that they're most interested in? And all of that's listed out on our website and on that link that Lee shared um, and or um, the relative um, either confidence or reluctance of particular groups and what that might mean in terms of potential attendance. Um, so, uh, for example, one of the things that um, sticks out to me when you look at the audiences uh, around Scarborough, um, there's relatively high concentrations of groups who are possibly less likely to attend in general um, for some of the, some of those groups, um, but also where there are substantial groups who might previously have been quite good bets for attendance, like Home and Heritage, we know they're relatively likely to be more reluctant. Um, but you have got lots of trips and treats, and we know that the family audience is holding up pretty well. And indeed, that Scarborough 
um, often programs pretty well uh, effectively for that audience. So again, it might be a case of doubling down on that particular um, strand of work. You know, kind of quite popular, quite accessible, quite family-based, um, not too expensively priced. Um, okay. So, um, does anyone have any questions based on that um, initial section? So it's quite sort of quite a lot of run through, as you like, in sort of the background data, of sort of who's there and what they're, what they're doing. Um, is there anything that surprised anyone? Um, or is there anything which kind of matches or doesn't match what you see in your own audiences? Um, anyone got any, any reflections? Oh, yes, Sally, um, did you want to unmute and um Yeah, so um, you're talking about populations, but I'm from, we're based in Scarborough. So the majority of people um, holidaying in Scarborough aren't from Scarborough. They're yep. coming over from West Yorkshire. So the profile is actually really rather different. So they're coming from obviously York, but Leeds, Bradford, um, mm -hmm. So I'm unclear when we're switching from audience to population. Yes, no, that, that's a um, that's a that's a fair point. So to, um, to so to be specific about what we are in general showing, um, except where we're, we're saying otherwise, uh, we are looking at the behaviour of people who live in the particular areas, um, and where we're looking at things like, for example, audience finder data, we're looking at their behavior in terms of attendance anywhere. So it would be looking at the behavior of your local audiences. Now, clearly for your local venues, and, and Scarborough is, I think possibly, possibly I think nationally, it's the, it's the most striking example of this I've seen. Um, Scarborough has very, very dispersed catchment area for actual attendance in Scarborough because of the huge proportion of the tourist audience. Um, to the extent that if you look at the way we commonly define catchment areas, uh, you know, so people, um, the areas that make up 80% of the audience, there's large chunks of South Yorkshire that suddenly pop up um, as part of the Scarborough catchment area. Um, so it's, I mean, it's certainly clearly, it's, it's true to say that this isn't the whole of your local audience. But we do think that it's useful to focus on what local people to your area are doing anyway um whilst recognizing it's not the whole picture does that make sense yeah yeah no i mean i thought that's what you were saying because um obviously um we're trying to um work with both our local audience but also um provide um opportunities for people who are visiting as well okay thanks yes um one thing that i, I would i would love to do where, where we'd have time is would be to split out attendance by location and by month um because i think you we, you would expect to see you know really quite big shifts within that um, and the profile um, within those um but yes that is a big caveat to put across all of this um and it's also worth noting so later on we look at where people from the local area are attending and you can see that for some places um that's more or less um concentrated in, in the very local local area and some others it isn't. Um, there's a question from Anthony. Does anyone think Yorkshire audiences are unusually mobile? Now, I would love to hear other opinions about this. Um, I have my own. Um, but, um, in, shall I jump in with my own opinion, but anyone else can add either in the chat or indeed um, you know, spoke, spoken. Um, their, their views on this. Um, I would suggest that in general Yorkshire audiences aren't particularly mobile um, distinctively compared to elsewhere. Once you leave aside places like London where just everything operates differently anyway because of you know, size and whatever else. Um, I think where Yorkshire audiences can look a little bit more mobile is where, because Yorkshire has, effectively has this kind of you know three borders um, onto other bits of the country, um, and borders that often have substantial population centres near them, one way or the other. 
Um, so a lot of Sheffield will spill into the East Midlands, um, but that's only because Derbyshire Council's the East Midlands, whereas actually it's pretty close. Um, similarly, you get the, kind of, the Pennines tends to operate as a bit of a border, but nonetheless, um, you will get some sort of spillage across there. Um, you've obviously got Teesside, just that, just north of Yorkshire, um, with some crossover. Um, yeah, and brilliant. Thanks, Jack. Um, I think about S um, S SJT and Scarborough um, is exactly that, kind of very two two very different um, audiences. Um, and I think you can see in SJT data from memory, if I'm not sharing any secrets, um, that you have very high levels of um, repeat attendance from a sort of like a core local audience, as well as this kind of much more infrequent, um, more remote audience. Um, so I wouldn't say Yorkshire audiences in general are unusually mobile. Obviously, there's a stark difference in Yorkshire between rural and non-rural areas um, in terms of how far people have a need to travel or are prepared to. Um, so there's a bit of that going on. Um, but one thing that we've seen in this data is that generally speaking, there's not maybe as much flow between the different bits of Yorkshire, certainly the bits of North Yorkshire, um, as you might expect um, in other areas. So people seem to be traveling either they're staying local or they're going to one of a whole host of different places. There's not like sort of one big um, sort of link. In the, in the way that, for example, if you look at West Yorkshire, there's big transfers of attendance between uh, Leeds and Bradford. Um, there isn't that same kind of here are two places where there's loads of transfer going on between particular places. Um, and indeed, it might be that it's possible to provide a little bit more of that. Um, um, old audiences with very significant and all my Scarborough work. This is Tim Tubbs, and COVID shrank them for a time to virtually nil. Yes. What does everyone think about the likelihood of these old cultural engagers attending? Um, public transport is yes, definitely poor. Um, um, oh. Again, shall I jump in, but please, anyone else who has thoughts to add, put your hand up or um, come to the chat or, uh, um, or indeed speak up. Um, the older audiences thing, I think, yes, it's really shrunk. Um, one of our concerns is that there are probably some older audiences who would have kept attending even to now, but because they stopped, um, may not come back. Um, in a way, people have gen genuinely got older faster um, in terms of mobility and um, you know, ac access to things. Um, partly confidence, partly people have just developed other habits, they've had other things to do. Um, we know that people are often doing more things more locally than they were, um, and that might be a, that might involve, and this is slightly speculative, but this might involve a bit of a shift away from cultural activities if those cultural activities aren't immediately available locally. Um, so yes, yeah, so I think that that old audience, I think, is a real is a real risk. Um, we thought, going back a few years, that there was going to be a shift at some point between old audiences and um, what are now younger audiences, um, but we thought it was somewhere in the future, and it seems to be the COVID's kind of brought it forward um, and created this kind of sudden um, sort of disruption in terms of audience profile. Um, again, I'd love to hear other people's thoughts or experience on that. I know that some people in some places have managed to retain, connect, um, bring back old audiences, but it tends to be sort of moderate as opposed to huge old audiences. So this is, this is, this is Jack, yes, from SJT. Um, you've seen old audiences warm up throughout the year. Generally speaking, it's old audience rate born, yes. Um, and the current production is back in line with pre-COVID. So it could mean they're, they're returning, or it could be that it's just about the product. Yes. So um, that's a really good point. I think there's um, there's something about people. It's almost like there's a risk budget people have been spending, I and mean, it's less pronounced now. But um, that something has to be worth spending that budget as well as spending the financial budget. Um, so if it's something that's sort of really kind of notable and high profile they'll still come, but maybe they'll be a bit more reluctant if it's not. Um, Sally saying, a heritage exhibition had a record attendance. Fab, that's great to hear. And Sally, can you say a bit more about that? 
what was the exhibition and what was the um yeah so um the old parcels office art space we normally put on contemporary art exhibitions we also have uh, put on music things as well um but for national we're an old railway building that's been converted so for national heritage week we decided to put on a heritage exhibition that was a series of enlarged maps that showing the history of Scarborough and how it had grown after the railways came. And um, we were amazed. Um, I mean, normally for an exhibition, we would perhaps have 400 people come to it over a three week period. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, we had the first day, we had 150 people came and virtually all of them would be over the age of 60. Um, and uh, yeah. and. Uh, obviously a lot of local people. I mean, we did have people traveling from Leeds and Wakefield as well, and other places, um, people who were on holiday, but um, a lot of people. So um, I think that says to us that actually, if you pitch something that's um, at the, you know, right for local people, um, then they will come. Um, yeah. Yes. And so maybe it's, it's that, that specificity thing, isn't it? That, um... It just you know things have to be really well targeted otherwise people maybe might be a bit more reluctant just to kind of go on the off chance but um yeah. that was really interesting um we have been doing some analysis recently um looking at the volume and profile of ticketed attendance across the country um based on audience spectrum um from before and um recently um before covid and recently and it does look like that for lots of groups they are now getting back to attendance that they had before um but we are still seeing a bit of a difference in some of those older and more heritage audience so it's, it's really i think it's really encouraging that you've got, um, done some well on them um does anyone else have any thoughts about um these older audiences and how that's been working for you Scarborough Jazz, okay. Uh, almost all our pre-COVID retiree audience has returned. And also a younger 40 plus audience seems to have a night out. We've been purposely targeting teenagers and had success with that, although we've mostly gone to uni now. Yes, yeah, so that's uh, um, that makes sense. But that's that's really that's really encouraging. So that suggests that um, your audiences overall are up then. Um, Adrian, is, is that is that the case? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, our, our audiences, yeah, uh, are generally sort of back to, it's very unpredictable and really unpredictable as to what we've, what we're putting on, to be honest. So, you know, we might put on something, you know, like a nationally known, if you're into jazz, a nationally known name. And um, that won't attract as bigger audience as one of the more low-key nights. But um, I don't know if that's partly because those tend to be a bit more expensive. But I think also people are coming just for a a night out rather than necessarily the highest quality product. So the lower key nights are a bit more perhaps easy going. You know what I mean? You're not sat yeah. there thinking you've got to get your money's worth out of this top artist. You can also be sort of having a bit of a chat and they're a bit more kind of fun, if you, if you want yeah, to yeah, put yeah, it that yeah. way. And, and I don't know if that is a post-COVID thing that people are just glad of nights out again you know but that, that sort of we've been starved of that sort of social atmosphere I mean, we've certainly seen a bit of that amongst younger groups although it, you know my impression is that started to taper off but um no that that's that's really interesting um we've certainly when we've talked to classical music organizations over the last few months they've been reporting something a little bit similar um, where the things they thought were, you know, have always been the kind of the staple thing you put it on and it sells out and it's, you know, straightforward with a traditional, slightly older audience. Um, other things where they've had a bit more um, volatility with attendance, but things that they maybe wouldn't have expected people to come to in such large numbers, maybe a bit more modern, a bit more experimental, a bit kind of, you know, more different, um, have tended to actually do pretty well. Um, so again, maybe, maybe that's something that carries across from classical to jazz as well. Um, night out audience strong cast. Good. Ah, you've noticed more attendance from Selby. That's interesting. Um, could that link to the family audience, maybe? If, uh, jump from Selby, that would be interesting to check. Um, 
and Danielle, sorry, where are you from? I can't remember. Um, Craven, okay, yes. Flip, 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 flip. Half very cautious, really slow return. Other half ready to return almost immediately in crossway to our restrictions. That's interesting. So young audience is fairly steady return. So yeah, overall it feels fairly normal again. Um, and of course, lurking over all of this at the moment is the sort of cost of living and what implications that's going to have. Um, and we will have some some research to show on that in the next few weeks um, as well. But you know, certainly we are definitely seeing people starting to be a little bit concerned about that and um, capturing that into their thinking. But hopefully um, that, will, that will mitigate the next few months. Um, interesting. Okay. Um, it's really good to hear about your experiences um, and to get a bit, of a bit of a picture of what's sort of actually happening in, in, in venues or in organisations. Um, can I suggest we take just um, a couple of minutes uh, comfort break uh, and then we'll come back and look a little bit about um, some of the um, things about behaviour of local audiences um, in terms of you know, profile and geography and, and behaviour patterns. Um, so if Elise, if you could pause the recording for a couple of minutes, um, sure. and if we see everyone back and the balls, trips and treats, um, relatively more likely to be um, paying for tickets as opposed to just um, because they're less um, limited by um, cost. And yes, there's, there's that strong kind of motivation to attend. That's what we're seeing, broadly speaking. Um, so, you know, bit ahead of the, um, the the population for some groups, but most notably probably community land culture buffs. They're really into culture. Um, but of course, this is all pre-COVID, so we might expect those numbers not necessarily to, um, it may be sort of dipped relative to others um, slightly. Um, since, and indeed, we've got this, the same figures broken out with data tables and the hidden, hidden slides um, looking by different areas. So remembering that this is people that live in these particular places um, as opposed to attending in them. Um, yeah, and you can maybe notice um, some particular differences. So um, experience seekers seem to be, you know, actually that something a little bit curious there. So experience seekers look a bit high in Harrogate. I'm not sure what's going on there. Um, uh, I will ask Isaac, can you check in the background um, the figures behind that one? Um, but um, so we, we can see relative differences in, in other places. Um, so Dormish and Pendles and Hamilton, you know, relatively more likely to be looking things even compared to other areas. Um, I guess probably you're talking, you know, there's quite good um, motorway links, um, you know, once you get onto the A1, et cetera, which may be driving some relatively more engagement. Um, those groups that tend to um, tend to drive a little bit more, I think, as well. Um, so yes, so you have you have to have these and the more detail behind them, um, particularly once you've done that um, quick check, um, you can see your experience seekers are relatively likely to engage, um, and you've got these sort of bit of metroculturals who are um, notable in York and not um, elsewhere. Okay, so looking at that time period we were um, looking at before, um, we can also, if we, if we um, set whatever the proportion was in 2016-17 of each of these groups, and then look at how it changes over time, we can see that certain groups there are relatively more of them, and other groups there are pretty much the same um, proportion, or in some cases possibly lower, but we've greyed out this band to say, you know, let's not get too excited about these minor differences but what is notable is the proportion of family groups and some of the lower engaged groups appears to have been rising um, over that period previous period um, and our expectation is that the family trend probably will continue the lower engaged trend may not um, partly cost of living partly um, uh, just you know covid related pressures on um, engagement and um, yeah, activity and comfort level um, so that's the general trend we've seen. So that suggests a kind of a broadening of the audience potentially, uh, which could be quite useful. Um, and also quite good in terms of um, social goals for organizations. Um, but we can also see, and this is where um, 
Um, if we look at the survey data, um, we can see that people who live in Scarborough, for example, are relatively more likely to have traveled um, elsewhere. Um, sorry, that people who live in Scarborough are relatively likely to have stayed local um, in terms of their engagement. Um, but that's also fairly true of York, um, which is kind of an interesting one. Um, and with York, my hunch is that what's going on there is that because the cultural offer is so strong in York, people have relatively little incentive to go elsewhere unless it's for very particular things or they're going further afield. And maybe, you know, partly, yes, to, I guess that there's cultural offer in Leeds, which is in, in York, but um, to a limited extent. Um, but once you start you know, get them going, going down to London, it's just a small portion of the population again to make that kind of big trip. So you do get this kind of quite concentrated um, local audience in York in a way that other areas there's a tendency to head out head out elsewhere um, and that's shown a couple of different ways here just depending how you how you cut and slice the data which give you a slightly different picture but essentially it's a similar similar picture going on the difference really might be that Selby um, the average drive time is kind of a bit lower because it's lower at the top end as well as um, lower at the bottom end um, and that's probably reflecting here, you know, Selby being sort of between several different places where it's worth traveling a bit of a distance rather than a huge distance or, or no distance at all. Um, so um, we also looked at whether in the surveys, people who lived in particular places which said they were likely to have attended for the first time, um, attended previously within a year or previously, but not within a year. Um, and again, this is pre-COVID data, so it's not affected by that kind of COVID period. Um, and again, we can see that Scarborough has the highest proportion of people saying, yes, I've been before, yes, it was within, within 12 months. Um, so a kind of notable kind of concentration of the local audience in Scarborough, um, as well as, of course, the tourist audience we've mentioned. Um, so, um, and so these are, these are people from Scarborough, but of course, we've already seen that they will tend to it locally as well. Um, so here we have just looking a little bit about people's attitudes by these different groups. Um, we got a slightly interesting paradox here where computer lab culture buffs are most likely to think it's time to get back to normal, which isn't to say that they're most likely to say they're willing to attend. They're sort of they think we should get back to normal, but maybe they're still a bit cagey. Um, Trips and treats, dormitory dependables, most likely to be happy to attend. Um, they're, you know, substantially above the average in terms of that. You know, they're really quite um, the, the strongest figures we've seen for that figure. Um, Common heritage skews towards heritage, as you might expect, um, but are now the most reluctant to attend. Um, and again, worth noting given the concentrations of those. Um, and then those who are most likely to have attended recently young people, families, higher engaged groups, and people without disabilities. There's still a, a real barrier in place in terms of people with disabilities attending, um, partly because as things have switched back, quotes, to normal, um, it's meant that the, um, the measures that were in place that were making it slightly safer to attend if you had a disability maybe aren't now um, as widespread. Um, just to note, in terms of overall attitudes, Yorkshire is in line with the national average. That's partly because Yorkshire is so big and so varied. Um, I mean, A is 10% of the national population, but also, um, yeah, it's got the mix of rural and urban and yeah, whatever. Um, so it's not that surprising. It's sort of the average overall. Um, so, um, any comments on that from anyone um, before we uh, move on? Because for this bit, I might hand over to Elise just to say a bit about the, the geography of local audiences. Okay. Okay. Uh, great, yeah. So this next section is going to focus on not only local audiences, but also uh, audiences to local organizations. So maybe 
offering a few more clues to understanding the full picture and um, going back to the uh, Sally, your very first comment at the start of the session. We're actually going to look at um, how the picture changes, not just based on audience location, but uh, where exactly they are going. Um, so the first um, thing we're going to look at is um, if we take an, um, a venue location, looking at where their audiences are for all locations that are, are all venues that are in that location. So if we're just looking at um, North Yorkshire, which is the, the bar on this chart, that's all the way on uh, the left. And this is um, what this chart is showing you is the proportion of tickets um, that come from a certain area. So what this is saying is audiences in North Yorkshire, 25% um, of them are, 25% um, of their tickets come from people that live in Yorkshire and the Humber, but not in North Yorkshire. Um, now, what this chart is really telling us is that the audience is very local, as we mentioned earlier in response to one of the questions. 80% um, of, uh, of, the, of the tickets are sold within Yorkshire and the Humber, um, and 25% of those are outside North Yorkshire, so the rest of that majority is in North Yorkshire. Um, and then the, the, the pink bar at the top is the rest of England, and then the tiny, tiny slither at the top, that's the rest of the UK. And um, so we're kind of seeing how targeted audiences are for organizations, again, that we have in our data set, but it, it gives a pretty good indication. And then splitting this out between Harrogate, Scarborough, and York, uh, those three middle bars are really showing us that for each of those places, uh, the tickets sold are mainly local once again. So Scarborough is the most striking example of this, where 76% of all tickets sold, uh, or tickets issued really, are uh, for people who live in Scarborough. This is uh, venues that are in Scarborough. 76% of tickets are to people in Scarborough. And 61% for York. Now, the one difference is... Um, the rural uh, local authorities in North Yorkshire, so that's Craven, Richmondshire, and uh, Selby, I believe. Um, yes, thank you. Um, for those, their the, their own sort of local population is not the the, the majority, um, and instead we see the rest of England is. Um, is uh, accounts for forty two percent of uh, of tickets sold, um, but it's it's worth noting that the second largest uh, group of tickets sold is in the rest of Yorkshire, the twenty seven percent, and a lot of those will be in Leeds. So uh, to bring us back a little bit to that uh, crossover we're talking about, but there is we, we're seeing some movement of. Um, of audiences, but mainly in the rural parts of North Yorkshire, rather than in the the more um, uh, urban areas, Har Harrogate, Scarborough, Yorkshire. Um, so that's a, a first look at sort of the crossovers and, and the general makeups. And now we're going to look at some maps that will give us a sort of a, no, oh, before looking at maps, uh, I forgot to mention, we have um, the, a comparable figure from the audience finder surveys. Um, so we said overall 80% of uh, people were visiting organizations locally in the ticketing data. Uh, when we look at the surveys, so that tends to be a little bit more heritage organizations, uh, museums, even though we do have museums in the ticketing data set now. Uh, but in, um, in this area, I'm not sure it says 55% of bookers, um, but 39% of survey respondents we're visiting uh, locally. So, um, so that's the general picture. And now if we look a bit more at maps to give an idea of locality. And now, so it might be a little bit confusing. We were looking at local organizations. Now we're just looking again at all bookers in North Yorkshire. So this could be people booking anywhere, not just their local area. We're gonna go back to that in a second, but for now, just quickly giving an overall view, um, sort of any anyone who's 
uh, who's booked for an event and that we have in our audience finder database um, is mapped here, uh, just to give an, an indication. And this is penetration of bookers in households. So the percentage of that base population that is attending anything. Um, and we can see a concentration around uh, Harrogate, York, and uh, a little bit in the outskirts of Scarborough, Craven. Um, but if we look at the actual number of bookers that this represents, it's a slightly different picture where we see the real um, sort of skew towards York, again, because they are a bigger population. Um, we also have a few more organizations contributing data in York compared to other parts of North Yorkshire. So that might be another reason why. Um, but we do see more of a concentration in those uh, more built up areas, uh, which is maybe what we'd expect. So in a sense, the, the different picture with the, the penetration map is also due to the fact that some places just have less people in them. Uh, so that's the overall picture. And now if we're doing the same thing, but looking at local venues only, so only the, the, the venues that are in North Yorkshire, in York, uh, Harrogate, Scarborough, etc. Um, the number of bookers, the penetration of bookers, so the proportion of the local population, of the base population that have attended, this is the picture. And we're seeing a concentration in the places where we do have uh, organizations uh, contributing data, really, which we'll see in a second with a, a different way to view this. Because right now, Okay, we're seeing Craven, Harrogate, York, Scarborough, but we're not really seeing where, where exactly um, differences lie and um, whether, whether one place is pulling more audiences compared to the other. Um, and we're seeing here again with the, the count map this time, not penetration, but we're seeing uh, big concentrations in York, but this time also the real centers of uh, Scarborough and, and Harrogate as well. Um, now, another way to view this um, would be to ask ourselves, where is, where is the, the limit between those places? We have the local organizations, but if for one given area, are they pulling more towards York or towards Scarborough or towards Harrogate? Um, uh, you may have noticed I'm not talking much about the other rural places. It's because we don't have organizations uh, contributing to this, but this is uh, perhaps quite a, an interesting way to view this. So to, to explain a little bit what we mean by watershed, if you imagine uh, a rainfall and then they will sort of pool towards a certain area. This is what we're, how we're thinking about audiences in this way. Uh, we're thinking about audiences in a specific uh, ward is the, the, the level, the geographical level we've chosen here. And um, we've looked at are the people in that ward booking more to the organizations in York, in Harrogate, or in Craven, or in Scarborough? And this is the picture it's showing. It's quite pleasingly striped, I think. Uh, it's quite nicely defined, um, nicely, nicely defined area. Um, so we're seeing um, Harrogate is really uh, pulling from quite far north and along that M1 line. It, it's staying with, within Harrogate and then um, there's quite a clearly defined separation to York and um, York is pulling from all those uh, very handy A roads all around in, in the four corners. Um, and Scarborough on the side holding its own quite well. And um, again, it fits in with the picture we were saying of uh, uh, the, the local population feeling, you know, very attached to going to, to visit um, in Scarborough. And Craven on the side, really holding its own considering the 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 competition it has um so it's nice to see that there's still a little part of craven that's um that's staying local um so this is sort of the general picture but um we're also going to show you the data behind it just to show that you know even though that whole north side looks very um uh very blue it's 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 not such a this is a clear cut, cut difference necessarily. So this is again penetration of bookers in the population. So the percentage of the population 
that are bookish. So we're seeing into right into New York, up to 44% of the population are bookers to venues in New York. And then it uh, tapers out to the edge. And then uh, this is the same picture for Harrogate, and you're seeing here it's up to 70%, 72, so it's much higher. And um, it does sort of patch out into uh, York and Craven. And the, the top of Richmond show here is, you see it's still 34%, so it's not very much, but still more than to York or to Craven, so which that's why it was colored blue, really. Um, but this is the picture for Harrogate and this is the picture for, for Scarborough. So really, really hyper-localized, um, not very much from um, the rest of, of the, the whole um, west side of, of North Yorkshire. And then finally, we have Craven, um, which, like we said, really holding its own. It's uh, still, you know, for the that uh, west side, up to 46% of the population are bookers. That's still uh, very decent. So, um, so that's sort. Of, I hope this gives you um, a better understanding of um, for your local for venues that maybe sort of can offer a proxy to your venue since you're a local um, where your audiences might come from, where they fall, uh, and where you might be able to to target to find more audiences. Um, of course, if you have any questions on any of this, uh, feel free to put in the chat or raise your hand. Um, and otherwise, we'll hand. I'll hand back to Ollie for the final part of the presentation. Okay. Um, so just to say on those um, that sort of watershed's view into the where people are. Um, so as Elise was saying, there's there's clearly a difference between the further north areas where there are actually relatively smaller percentages that are kind of in, in the balance, and the areas at the bottom where there's big concentrations, particularly the York and Harrogate um, venues. Um, but it was notably that for Scarborough and Craven, the areas where they had their audiences, people were more likely to go there than elsewhere. So that is, that's the kind of, um, kind of, sort of the, the distinction that's, that's showing. 